So uh, our first panel will revolve around innovative pedagogies in maths and is moderated by Ms. Vaijayanti. Uh, Vaijayanti is the director of resource and research group at Akshara. A trained economist from JNU has worked in health sector and decentralization prior to venturing into the education field. In education, she has extensively worked on issues ranging from early childhood education to school education in the Indian context. Most of her research works have been evidence-based policy research. She anchored Asar Karnataka for several years and she has been a member of a number of committees set up by the government of Karnataka on elementary education, human development and ECCE. I request Vaijayanti to take it forward from here. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Shilpashri, for nice intro. Um, before we start this panel, actually, this panel is about innovative pedagogies in math. Um, at the outset, I feel there are two documents that we all should be keeping in our mind. One is NCF 2005, which talks about mathematization of, you know, a child's thought process. That I think we should be always keeping it in our mind before we even think about innovative pedagogy. The second thing is the NEP to, uh, 2020 talks about strengthening the foundational numeracy skills of children. I feel these two are interconnected. When we talk about, uh, you know, strengthening the foundational skills, which means problem solving, you know, math communication and higher order cognitive skills. So all those things are very much linked to each other. And I'm sure today this particular session will kind of, you know, discuss debate about these issues. Thank you. Uh, now, with that, in mind, I would like to invite uh, my panelist. To start with, I would like to invite Madam Kaveri, State Project Director, Samagrish Shikshana Karnataka. And when I asked her, can you please share your uh, bio sketch, she said, no, 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 I don't want anything. I just have to be called as State Project Director Karnataka. But my personal experience in this almost two years has been she has, she has been very proactive, open-minded, and easily approachable officer, and very, very down-to-earth officer, right? So I, I mean, Akshara has been really uh, thankful to you for all the support you gave us, and welcome, madam. Thank you. Now I would like to uh, invite uh, Dr. Gananath, who is our another panelist. Uh, Dr. Gananath has been a scientist and a math educator. He holds a PhD from Indian Institute of Science. After that, he moved to ONGC as an R&D you know, uh, team member. Uh, from there, uh, he kind of, you know, shifted to education, started working with Rishi Valley Rural Experiment at Madanpalli. I guess that is where he kind of developed an interest in innovative, developing innovative pedagogies around math. So since then, he has been a math educator, resource person, not just nationally, also at the international level. And uh, he started something called Suvidya, which is kind of a like-minded, math resource team which believes in improving math education in the country and he was instrumental in developing d -Ed curriculum for math also was a chairperson for textbook committee on mathematics as well as you know he has authored several books on math teaching learning and pedagogies and welcome you sir we are happy to have you here yeah now I invite uh, Mr. Shiv Shankar Shastri ji. Yeah, um, Shastri sir uh, is a ma math and science communicator and has been a science writer and translator as well and modeler he calls himself or a gamian rather. Yeah, it took me some time to quite 
tongue twister, and he is fluent in many many languages. That is that is a great you know asset in in math education as well. I feel, and uh, you know he is a person behind uh, developing Math Park at Kuppam, which is the Agatya International Foundation Center. Um, it, it's a wonderful uh, campus. I must say that we had been to there and also instrumental in developing science center at Gauri Bitnur. And he has been awarded uh, by government of Karnataka as a math communicator, and uh, you know, also Karnataka Sahitya Parishad, and has been honored in Japan Hubba as well. And he, of course, he has authored several books uh, in math and science. For Akshara, he has been very close to us because he has been a our mentor for Ganita Kalika Andolana 2.0, he kind of helped us from conceptualizing to bringing it to the you know kit that you would see outside. He has been supporting us immensely. Thank you, sir, for that. Now let me call upon uh, T.K. Raghavendra. Uh, Raghavendra has been working with Department of Education since last at least two and a half uh, decades now and uh, especially with uh, you know academic wing of uh, education department he has been a member of mathematics textbook committee and involved in uh, translation of ncert textbooks to canada and uh, several research projects initiated by ncert has been anchoring in karnataka he has been part of uh, the position paper on national curriculum framework um, no, sorry, NEP 2020 rather, he has been anchoring that, especially the math one. And uh, he has been a national resource group of NCRT and NUPA as well. Um, so far as Ganita Kalika Andolana is concerned, he has been kind of a bouncing board for us because whenever we develop, whenever we have an idea, we have been discussing with him as well. Uh, as well as he has been a classroom practitioner, which is very, very critical for us. So that, you know, whether it works or not works and all those things, I mean, he has been helping us with that. Thank you, Raghavendra. Welcome to you. Yeah, with that, I would like to start this session. Uh, let me just uh, walk you through the structure of the session. Um, we will start the session with Madam Kaveri's opening remarks and uh, she has to rush to another you know meeting she was really very nice to us i mean she stuck to her promise she said i'll come over but i have to leave uh, she has a very important meeting she has to leave for that we will start with that and after that we will have a round of you know um, question uh, i mean discussions around uh, innovative uh, pedagogies it will end with q and a so that there will be some kind of a you know, participation of all the participants gathered here. Thank you, madam. Good morning to all of you. Uh, let me confess, I'm, no, uh, I'm not an expert at all. I think all the experts are uh, around me. Um, when uh, Vaijanti actually requested me to uh, do this uh, let us come to this uh, symposium and uh, actually address uh, the participants. I was actually, w I wanted to be the participant, but then I could not get the opportunity. Uh, I think, uh, as we all know, maths, it is an integral part of our life. I think I need not dwell on the importance of maths. But still, when I represent, that is, I represent all the schools that comes under the government. So when I speak about maths, it is very difficult for our children. It is not a very popular subject. I think both maths as well as English, it is not at all popular. So how do we make it popular? I think that should be the major consideration. Even when we think about uh, the NEP 2020, it also speaks about activity-based approach. I think that is what we should be aiming at. And uh, even uh, post-COVID, what we have observed is that there has been a very big learning gap. In fact, I think uh, the recent uh, ASER report, the uh, uh, 2022, it has really pointed out that 
the gap is much more in uh, the uh, reading rather than in maths but that is a small consolation but still we also observed that when we did our own baseline survey that there was a huge drop especially in foundational literacy and numeracy so that was the reason the government of karnataka we actually came up with a new program called as kalika chetrike which is an activity based um, approach and uh, the approach was such that that whatever deficiencies that were observed uh, that is whatever learning outcomes that the students had would not have achieved for the uh, in the past 2 years we wanted to cover it up so select selected learning outcomes of the previous 2 years as well as the selected learning outcomes of the present uh, year as well as uh, foundational literacy uh, literacy and numeracy these were the things that we gave importance to and we have developed activity books as well as activity banks and uh, the response that we have got so far that is we have rolled out this program in the present year and the response that we have received is tremendous both uh, the teachers as well as the students they are highly appreciative i think this is the intervention that was required i think learning cannot happen only with textbooks i think uh, rote learning will never be appealing to the children i think one of the reasons why the children do not really perform well is rote learning is really not possible in maths i think uh, the performance in private schools is very high uh, in all the subjects because of this uh, rote learning approach but in kalika chetrike we wanted the children to gain conceptual understanding i think that is very very important so that has been our approach and also we want to continue with similar kind of approach even for the next year so we are thinking about uh, you know using stories so that is highly appealing to the children because maths need not be you know just about uh, uh, addition subtraction multiplication division it can be made highly appealing and uh, story based approach and using other forms of art all these things we are dwelling on this is where i would like to inform that even uh, the interventions like nalikali it is also an activity based approach that we are following in karnataka for standard 1 uh, to 3 and after standard 1 to 3 of course akshara foundation has stepped in and for both fourth fifth standard as well as sixth to eighth standard we have this uh, ganita kalika andolana where this uh, maths kits have been given to all our students and it has been highly successful because the feedback that we have got we have received is when the children they do the activities by themselves when they are able to see when they are able to feel when they are fe able to observe i think the comprehension is much more better i think that this has be this should be the approach everywhere and um, uh, when actually there are many challenges so the challenges are about um, especially in government schools it is all about the quality of teaching i think uh, when we uh, we have very good excellent teachers i think uh, 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 many of our teachers are highly motivated but at the same time we also have paucity of teachers what about schools where we do not have teachers who will be uh, who are not from uh, from maths background even we will not be able, we are not able to get guest teachers who are uh, 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 from mathematics so this is the uh, these are the uh, constraints that we are actually facing with all these constraints how we address is that is we have to scale up whatever we do we have to scale it up we are talking about not just 500 600 schools we are talking about 49000 schools where the attend where the number of uh, uh, students uh, that is the strength of each school may vary from less than 10 to more than 3000 even 3000 strength uh, uh, schools composite colleges are also there so we cannot have one size fit uh, policy for all uh, this is where i think uh, we are also encouraging cluster sharing meetings where in the cluster sharing meetings uh, we have teacher mentors who actually try to uh, make our teachers understand the concepts very well so you know it is not about introducing a new pedagogy and all that whether it will get delivered in the school i think that is the challenge i can i think from the government side we can issue as many circulars excellent activity books but finally will it reach a remote place in 
Yadgir or Gulbarga, I think that is the challenge. How do we monitor whether whatever that has been envisaged by the government, it reaches, it reaches to the last remote village? I think that this, these are the constraints that we are facing. But with all this, I do admit that there is hope because we have excellent people, as I'm telling, we have excellent officials, both at the district level, at the block level, even at the school level. And uh, this is how we want to, we want to motivate these people uh, to ensure, and uh, we are also planning that uh, just like foundational literacy, numeracy, we keep focusing on, especially for maths, at least once in a month, that is, sorry, once in a year, for one month, we want to do this Masa Charan. So this is, this, uh, this is the feedback that we have got so that the children pick up. And um, at the same time, I think uh, we always talk about the glorious history of maths that is uh, in India, probably in Greece also. But uh, I think it is not just about history. It is about what the reality that we have to confront. And only if uh, uh, we give importance to maths as well as STEM, I think there will be definitely uh, uh, it will result in very good outcomes and probably the quality in education will improve and also our children will be equally placed when compared to the other children who are economically probably better off. So this is where I think when symposiums like this is, these are held, we also come to know a lot of, uh, 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 we get feedback and probably it will also about how we can change our direction, how we can make improvement. I think these are the things that we look forward in the symposium. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Uh, one second, yeah. <laughs> Please hand over. Uh, Yeah. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming. I know. Thanks a lot, Matt. Thank you. Yeah, you can be. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I think with that uh, positive note, let us start our discussion. Um, why don't you go that way so that it becomes? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, uh, let us start the discussion on innovative pedagogies. It's, it's very clear that what Madam was talking about during COVID, you know, whatever we have lost, we have to recover it, you know, uh, fast and better and uh, make it, you know, sustainable. Uh, for example, he gave an example of Kalika Chaitake, which is an, uh, you know, outcome of COVID uh, loss of learning. So I think there is a lot of scope for innovative pedagogies. And uh, I think the session is also about that. So let us just uh, discuss about the innovations in math learning. Uh, in fact, I mean, I'm sure most of you might have seen as a report yesterday, uh, which is talking about that, uh, you know, there's a dip in learning outcomes, uh, uh, language, more in language, also uh, equally uh, more in um, math, especially grade five, I saw that which is really quite uh, a concern. And uh, if, you, if you look at that, it is one, uh, you know, sp uh, part of the spectrum. The other side of it, you know, we have uh, that, you know, Nipun Bharat and NEP mandates us that say by 2025, we need to, uh, uh, you know, make sure that children have acquired foundational numeracy and literacy. So uh, there is, I mean, this kind of a dichotomy is there. So, uh, so how do you uh, see that there is a need for pedagogical intervention in this kind of a context? Um, I mean, what is the need and then how do we think about it and what should we do about it? Yeah, good morning. Thanks uh, for this question. Thanks also for calling me. This is a great opportunity to share some of the ideas, experiences, and uh, uh, views, you know, uh, by looking forward. As you rightly said, there have been many interventions. Madam also was speaking about uh, 
different types, not only from uh, Ganita uh, Kalika kit, but other uh, kinds of interventions. See, maths is a slightly different subject. Already it has been pointed out. I was very happy when she said, you know, you can't mug up, you can't, you know, memorize um, mostly. But I also know children who memorize, uh, you know, the theorems uh, and, you know, things like that. If you are a teacher, you would know. But maths is definitely different, at least, you know, in terms of uh, the nature of the subject and so on. So how do you approach, you know, already you have uh, <coughs> societies uh, uh, is against uh, this kind of uh, uh, maths. Maths learning is difficult for children for several reasons. One of them is uh, fear of maths. So what would uh, a teaching aid do? A, uh, in the simplest of terms, just to remove the fear, if, you, if possible, you know, use it. Uh, then, of course, the uh, concept, uh, concept formation and practice and a lot of other things are absolutely important, but even to remove the fear of maths through activities, through games, through puzzles, uh, itself is a great, uh, you know, great idea, and it is quite possible to do so. But I think there have been uh, there are issues also, as uh, all of you know, uh, we can uh, take stock of this. There is an overlap of uh, these two objectives. One is learning of maths uh, concepts and uh, practice. There is a separate assessment, and then. Uh, removing the fear of maths. So how do you, is it, is it right, is it uh, reasonable to have one, one solution for multiple problems or is it reasonable to uh, have uh, w w one solution for each of these? In this background, she was pointing out, you also may have said it and I think uh, uh, one is the knowledge uh, base of these teachers who teach maths in classes one to class seven at least and of course beyond also, but beyond it's a little different. We, has, we have done a study. We have worked with D8 colleges in Karnataka for several years. One thing we noticed uh, 15 years ago or so, yeah, most of them come after plus two arts. You know, most of them, it would be, in my opinion, 98%. In each class, there may be one child or two who would have done science. So now uh, they all left maths in 10th because they didn't like or they were afraid of maths or like whatever, they like some other subject. Now they are done plus two, then you do a DA training and then you now become a teacher and you have to teach maths. So these are the issues, the teacher, uh, the preparation uh, before, that is the uh, pre-service, in-service, everything needs a different outlook. So I think uh, it's necessary to approach uh, this problem a yeah. little more specifically. Okay. It has been very generic uh, in ah. the past. Yeah, thank okay. You. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sir, uh, as a teacher educator, so, I mean, you have been working with so many teacher groups and things like that. How do you perceive innovations in? Uh, so definitely, you know, new uh, innovations are necessary because you know, the times are changing. The very fact that you know NEP you know, has been implemented with a view that uh, we are preparing you know for the fourth industrial revolution you know, so definitely you know it is a kind of a new challenge you know which is put upon us. So NEP became a necessity because to address the same kind of a problem because the times have changed, and the pr after especially you know we had that difficult period of pandemic. Now the because Madam also you know said that. This is a kind of innovation, unless we innovate and also you know, address to it, we cannot just cross over you know, the, uh, the pandemic problems, you know, what it has created. That's one first part of it. The second part of it is, what we see you know, generally is that it is not the fear of mathematics that is there, but when a, a teaching happens, when you know, the learning happens, when the child, you know, gets attracted to the subject, that attraction is lost, you know, in the mathematics. Yeah. Because we do not tell them whatever, you know, that is exciting, whatever, you know, that is, you know, attractive in the mathematics. So why, you know, the children, you know, do not come to mathematics is because, you know, it is not attracting. So look to some kind of a new film, let us say, you know, RRR or something like that. Why, you know, children go there? Children don't, do you think that they understand the storyline? No. Do you think, you know, they can relate to the people, you know, there? No. 
it is the question of you know the excitement you know what uh, you know it creates it's so from uh, first standard <coughs> to the uh, the 10th uh, standard people you know just go there you know, to have that excitement can we not create you know such kind of an excitement you know, in the mathematics it is possible other countries you know have tried it in fact more math modern math museum museums are there you know for math medicine you know, in the world in experimented in india such kind of a new innovations approaches are not there in that view see one one sentence i can just to say other than curriculum children do not have anything else to engage with math activities so let us say you know uh, that's why you know the math park you know became a necessity because of that so we do not have math magazines we do not have math films we do not have in you know, a math games nothing or for example another example i will give you see every school you know in india has some kind of a competition or the other in science and mathematics there will be enough prizes what is of the prizes given definitely not related to mathematics we do not have a simple uh, statue of an einstein or a mathematician bhaskaracharya or something you know to be given you know to the child we do not have so unless you know you create such kind of innovations so that people you know should you get engaged you know with mathematics in fact she madam was speaking about you know ma mathematics month itself why not it be a kind of a mathematics festival so that you know people talk for all the 30 days mathematics mathematics and mathematics not the curriculum mathematics <laughs> curriculum related but the exciting things you know, in mathematics yeah. everybody is a general statement that mathematics is everywhere and everybody you know wants mathematics and without mathematics you cannot say okay why, what what prevents you know to bring them you know down to 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 the for example the android itself the mathematics of android we do not have a single chapter you know in the entire curriculum you know in the in india the math mathematics you know android you know uses it is not that you know you have to tell you know in coding itself but the exciting thing about that kind of android or for example gps for example without mathematics how it can work so the mathematics you know, involved in it that is not there see about 10 to 15 years ago there was an attempt integrating curriculums yeah. okay now it is forgotten but unless and until let us say the f f we had you know some kind of a eight wars you know in uh, india first battle of panipat so can we just you know look to it you know mathematically so that is a history subject what is the mathematical component in it mathematical component was just you know he brought you know the higher kinds of weapons so that one shot 1000 people die on the other hand you were one shot kills you know only one person see that is the math part is behind it so unless you know we we cultivate such kind of innovative kind of practices children do not get interested they do not come let us say the reverse the thing if they were to come they know how to conquer our ruchi hottes butre see if, if they were to get interested you know they know you know how to get it but the thing is it is not at made attractive yeah, thank you. Um, in fact, uh, I mean, you both well said it. I mean, you said that there is definitely a need for innovation in every specific, uh, you know, requirement for innovation, and specific innovations are required. Mm -hmm. And you spoke about, you know, creating an ecosystem that uh, helps children learn math better yeah, and relate themselves to, you know, day-to-day -day life and, uh, and to inculcate interest in the subject. That's very, very well said. Now, Raghavendra, I thought it would be, um, you know, a good question for you to, uh, do you see there is a change in uh, paradigm shift in math teaching and learning in this country post NCF 2005 and the latest in EP 2020? Has the thinking been changed because you are working very closely with the schools and also you are part of a diet? You know, unless the diet lecturers and the DSERT uh, and the officials at DSERT or the textbook committee people think about it, then we won't be able to bring in any change in our, you know, thought process. So what do you think? I mean, like, uh, do you feel that you would also see it in the programs like, say, Kalika Chetarike or in the classroom where teachers are trying to innovate some of the things to uh, reach out to children in teaching mathematics? Yeah. Uh, see, there is one thing. Okay. We all say that mathematics is an abstract subject. 
No, not at all. Mathematics is a very concrete subject. Mathematics is a subject with abstract symbols. That is true. But mathematics itself is not an abstract subject. Because suppose you write like this. If I ask you what is this, everyone says it is 4. Because it is an universally accepted symbol. On the other hand, if I ask what is that 4, you may give number of answers. So if you attach some quantity or if you find some relation with that, say for example, 4 books. One book is this, 4 books is this. 1 kilometer, so 1 kilometer is this distance. 4 kilometer is 4 times this distance. See, mathematics becomes easy where we can attach some concrete things to the abstract symbols. See, that is the very basic thing we have to understand. Even national curriculum frameworks also says that. So it is child friendly, playing with the numbers and all those things. See, when we look at this, uh, the very nature of mathematics, everyone, uh, uh, Madam was telling that uh, mathematics is a very abstract subject uh, and students do not understand. Previous uh, SPD was also telling that. I was uh, totally blind to that mathematics and if mathematics would have not been there, I would have scored more. That was our uh, statement. See, why it has become like that? That is the, if, uh, if you understand that question, then mathematics can be made easy. Say, when does a child uh, starts learning mathematics? See, according to cognitive theories, it starts learning mathematics at two years. In an abstract way, how? If you give two objects, a smaller object and a bigger object, Usually the child prefers bigger object. Why the child prefers bigger object? That has, uh, the child has no answer for that. But it knows that this is a bigger object and that is a smaller object. A child crying with one chocolate, if you give one more chocolate, it stops crying because it understands that one plus one is two, two is greater than one. See that mathematical understanding is not there, but in an abstract way, the child learns. See the child can see which is nearer and which is farther. All these examples are very clearly, uh, very clearly indicate that the children possess the knowledge of mathematics. What happens they, when they are in an informal stage of learning mathematics? They learn well. See, for example, vendors. How mathematically they are good at? Tailors. How they are good at uh, mathematical operations? You see carpenters. How they are good at uh, symmetrical surfaces? You see masonry workers. How good they are building at... Uh, building a, uh, constructing a building with all those things. They all possess mathematics. Mathematics becomes concrete only when we associate something with it. Say for example, I got up in the morning has no meaning. Because in the morning means you may got up from uh, 3 o'clock up to 12 o'clock. At what time you got up in the morning, that makes the sense. Say while transforming from informal stage of learning to formal stage of learning, what is the difference we are creating that makes the subject difficult? See, we have to connect mathematics to our daily lives. See, even if you ask a 8th class child, what is the set of integers he can say? What is set of natural numbers he can say? Why did we want uh, the set of integers? He has no answer. Because we made him by heart. This is n is the set of natural numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. No child knows why did that uh, set of natural numbers come. See, because Say, for example, one previously people used to show like this, two, three, then later it was converted into symbols and all those things. So when we started representing uh, or when we invented logarithms or when we wanted to represent zero, so then that set of counting numbers were not sufficient, therefore one more set was required. See, when we invented negative numbers and represent, we started representing negative number, we, it was found insufficient to include a set which has only 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Therefore, we got into another set. See, this uh, logic is not there. Yeah, but do you think that, you know, this thinking has been, you know, uh, has, has gone into the teacher's mind and she's practicing at the classroom? Do you see that? Because all the intent of all this document is to uh, kind of tell us that child comes do not come with empty mind, right? Child, child construct knowledge, right? So uh, our job as a teacher is to be only a facilitator, to help child construct that knowledge, right? So the intention of all these policy documents and the frameworks are fantastic. I feel they understood, 
how it should be done. But do you see that in the, uh, you know, during your teacher training, for example, or when you visit the school, are teachers, what percentage of teachers are using it? And are there any hiccups, you know, uh, they find it challenging? Or what is that? Is there an issue with teacher education? Or is there an issue with, uh, you know, the kind of in-service teacher or pre-service teacher training that we do? What is it? Actually, uh, teachers, they are more focusing on completing the syllabus, not making the concepts clear. Yeah. That is the very first thing. And our uh, system of assessment also focuses upon the examination. If a teacher tries to develop these mathematical skills in the classroom, no one appreciates. So every parent appreciates only when his kid scores out of out in mathematics yeah. or any learning subject. You know, this uh, national curriculum uh, framework, it has uh, very rightly mentioned. And if you go just beyond that curriculum framework and look into the national credit framework, it says assessment should be done in three times, three types. One is assessment for academic skills. Another thing is academic for vocational skills. And the third one is experiential learning. See, we are lacking in the experiential learning. But mathematics is built in every part of the life. Wherever you go, there is life. So say, take water. Suppose you are reading a poem on water, it represents Kannada. Uh, Suppose you, uh, you, you explain the physical properties of water, it refers to physics. Yeah. Suppose you calculate, uh, suppose you mention what are the uh, elements involved in the formation of water, it, it refers to chemistry. How many molecules are involved, how many atoms are there in one molecule of water, it represents mathematics. See, wherever we go, however we go, there is mathematics and we being the teachers are not connecting this mathematics to the daily life experiences. So whenever we say that it is mathematics, it is a theorem, it is an abstract symbol, teacher are getting feared away. And on the other hand, even the teaching, uh, what is the teacher education courses you said, Teacher education courses uh, presently teach theoretically all these things and they are not put into the practical woven. Once these things are tested in a practical woven, then they will come out then well. Is, so yes. this is what uh, yeah. making the difference yeah. in learning mathematics. Yeah, correct. So that brings to a question of, you know, we, we need to innovate and innovate and innovate. But uh, what are the enablers, enabling factors when somebody is innovating uh, math pedagogy, for example? You know, what, what are the things that are required and what should we keep in our mind when we, you know, develop some innovative approaches to math teaching? I mean, you have done a lot, right? You have kind of created models and things like that. So it should never, I mean, Madam was also talking about scale and Ashok spoke about scale in his uh, speech as well. So I think uh, then, then what are the enablers that we need to think about when we are developing some, any innovative pedagogies in math. Yeah, see, uh, I already said it. Maths is a different subject and needs an entirely different approach. Okay, and now you have this uh, problem solving as the center of maths. Okay, and now for several years we have been focusing on the skills, numeracy, for instance. Even now, the foundation and numeracy and literacy. How did we arrive at this in 2022 or 2023 when uh, right from 2005 we have been talking about the mathematization of uh, child's uh, thinking processes. So something has not gone right for several years and now we are sitting today to take stock of you know what could be right. So to respond to your question on what are the innovative approaches, there are actually many approaches and we have started with this uh, uh, pedagogy using uh, certain materials. Many, many, there are these days, I started like this, and uh, nowadays there are many of these kits and uh, experiences. And you can also think of problem solving as a skill by itself, and uh, pattern recognition. These are the things that we do, and very recently I'll share a small experience. Sure. Uh, using this uh, Janapada Ganita, or folk mathematics, I st st started, you know, collecting many. There are many, many are available. I, st I don't know if you know the story of 17 horses. There was a uh, father had 17 horses, wanted to distribute his children, uh, one, one ninth to one child, one third to another child, half of it to third child, okay? 
Now, obviously difficult, 17 hours, half of 17 is eight and a half, and you know the problem. So there was a wise man who was passing through, and he said, uh, I'll, uh, I have another horse, please take this. So now it becomes 18. Half of 18 is nine, okay, nine, one person got nine. One third is six, you got, one ninth is two, you got 17. Still one is left that was, that belonged to the visitor. He returned this, people are happy, there is no maths, but there is maths in a different way. Now I asked uh, my children and you know, some teachers also, can you extend this? Can you extend this? Find a new problem. This is called uh, technically problem posing. What I did was problem solving. Now there is a problem posing. Instead of 17, you come up with a different number. Let's say 23. And you give half of it to first child, something, something. You, you design a new problem. And now you are in the area of math. So this is not activity, this is not this, this is not handled ideas and you know things like that. And there are many such uh, problems, you know, folk maths. And each one can be extended, can be looked at mathematically. Abstraction, then problem solving, problem posing, pattern recognition. We are missing the opportunity in the classroom. It is in front of us we are missing the opportunity because we were not trained. Mm. So I think the, it's, a, uh, it's a moving target. One has to be extremely you know, careful and uh, catch the idea if it's available in the classroom. For that, you need pre teacher preparation, pre-service, and in-service. We need the materials, especially in Canada. So uh, the, uh, yeah, this is one approach. I'm sure there are many more approaches. This is uh, extremely important in the coming days especially the way you know the STEM programs are going on all over the world. Uh, this is an incredibly important point. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sir, you, I mean, you spoke about teacher training programs and things like that. You have conducted several teacher training programs. There are two questions that come to my mind. One is, uh, what are that we need to keep in our mind when we are training the teachers on any innovative math pedagogy? The second thing is, what has been your journey when you developed a science uh, center in Gauri Bidnur or in Kuppam? What were the things that you kept in your mind? Because these are all innovative models and things like that. I mean, which, which any person who's developing any innovative pedagogy that needs to, we need to keep in our mind. So can you just uh, throw some light on that? Uh, definitely, madam. Let us uh, first accept that there are problems. Okay. And new problems have come up in uh, new situations, I told you. So my responses have been only to the such kind of problems. So Sir was, uh, was speaking about you know, the Janapada Ganita. So definitely, you know, if one thing, you know, limitations in you know, our teachers you know, have is that the availability of resources. For example, resourceful books, resourceful uh, websites, etc. And also the time they do not have. But the locally, what is available is this kind of a folklore. So I have done a kind of a project for Humphrey University on uh, folk mathematics. So then you know I came to know that they in Karnataka, extensively you know there are uh, the folk uh, mathematics has been collected. Mm. So 18 collections are there you know in, Kar in Karnataka which is not there in any other language in India. So that is a kind of a resource which perhaps in each and every uh, you know rural uh, teacher you know will at least you know know. So that is the kind of a thing in an encyclopedia where you know he can just draw you know something. So I have trained teachers you know on that also. The second one is the very fact that that I created, I designed in a math park as well as in a math toys, for example. I did it you know for HN Science Center. It was that that you know that it should become a kind of example for copying you know for others. For example, we have because of the government policy again. That's where you know the intervention of the governments is also necessary. Science parks, you know, here and there, and also science websites, you know, popularized by Arvind Gupta, toys, etc. For for mathematics, there is nothing. So, I began to train, you know, the teachers regarding you know math toys. For example, a toy is one which is also included in the NEP, etc. Mm -hmm. A toy is one which has to be toyed about. So. You need not have, you know, the knowledge of uh, the making the toy or, you know, learning from the toy. But you can just, you know, play with it. But that play gives a series of images which stays, you know, with the child. 
So, all said and done, any kind of a skill starts from associating your knowledge and application of knowledge with that kind of an image what you already have. Oh. That exactly is the thing, you know, that I have trained. In fact, the origami is such a kind of a skill that is cheap, universal available paper, and people will, 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 will be naturally attracted, you know, to that because, you know, you can just, you know, use it, any origami uh, thing, you know, as a kind of a, a toy and easily destructible because a toys always, you know, children, you know, have to break. So, new toy, you know, has to be created. So, definitely, see, all these kind of a things, you know, uh, can be utilized and I have utilized it you know, to train teachers. Mm. And the response has been, you know, wonderful because in wherever, that's how, you know, the, even the government, you know, has adopted, Vigyan Prasar is a, uh, 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 is from DST, Department of Science and So, they have been sending me, you know, throughout India to train, you know, for uh, mathematics through origami skills. In fact, when I was a member of this uh, NEP position paper, I have suggested, you know, three things. One is that, that uh, employing uh, origami skills, you know, to teach mathematics because that is universally paper is available and learning it is easy that can be used you know, in a very uh, creative way in, in, in uh, classrooms, number one. Number two, the folklore, using the folklore. For example, we are having in each chapter the practice problems, mm. including you know, one or two folklore problems. Mm. Mm. That is available because you know, the, in we are having a repository of that folklore already done. The third thing is increase the knowledge of astronomy you know, in the student because that's where Indian mathematics, you know, comes into picture because all our innovations have been connected to astronomy. Mm. But when we say, you know, let us say, you know, Bhaskaracharya or Kuttaka method, you know, he explains. So, well, to give the example, he gives the example of a Siddhanta which is related to astronomy. We cannot relate it to the curriculum. So, these things, you know, I have suggested. And I have started, you know, training with also the people in these three things. So, the response, you know, has been tremendous because it is there, it, it, is, it can be used straight away, you know, in the classrooms and these materials are easily available, you know, uh, around, you know, in the folklore, in the, in the, in the websites, etc. for uh, cheap. And also, there is an insistence in NEP that skill-based learning, you know, should be given importance. Mm. Then what could be other than, you know, this paper, skill of using paper, skill of using, you know, your own kind of material, you know, like uh, Janapada Ganita, etc. Uh, Raghavendra, your thoughts on, you know, what has been the idea of NEP? Is there uh, NEP 2020 on innovation? Is there a scope for it? Yes, we all have been talking about toy-based, story-based, and things like that. But uh, have they really articulated the scope of it? Or is it just restricted to, uh, you know, FLN, for example, which is very easily I can conceive that idea of story and toy-based for FLN. But post FLN, I mean, the issue is also you have children studying from 4 to 10. How do I do about it, right? It is not, I mean, if we can't be always focusing on FLN. We also need to parallelly think about other grades as well till we find uh, it is FLN children, you know, reaching grade 4 and 5. What are the thoughts in NEP that talks about? Uh, See, so as per uh, the innovations of NEP are concerned, we can. Uh, summarize all those things in terms of developing what is called 21st century skills. Okay. So once we focus upon that, there are many interrelated issues with that. Say for example, problem solving, reasoning. See, we say that two parallel lines never meet to start yeah. with. And we start with, we say that zero has nothing. Because I have two books, if I take out one, there is one. If I take out that one also, there are no books, that is zero. So when we introduce this uh, decimal system, we say that zero has value. So when we want to represent large numbers, we use powers of 10. So even millions and billions are expressed only in terms of powers of 10. See, this kind of a reasoning we need to develop for, uh, right from uh, the foundation stage up to the grade 12. So like that, uh, there are many skills focused there. See, critical thinking, logical reasoning, problem solving and mathematical communication. See, when mathematics people look into that communication as one of the 21st learner is, uh, 21st century skills. So we don't conceive a mathematization in communication. 
See, there are mathematics, uh, mathematics communications. See, when we adopt mathematical thinking and when we think anything, any abstract thing for that matter, uh, when, he, when we think of any abstract concepts or things or whatever uh, it is related with daily life activities, to make it concrete, we have to associate it with some quantity, time, or we have to relate with something. So, if you focus upon these things, so moral and ethical reasoning is also there. So, when we focus upon developing these skills, so we start thinking about inventing different kinds of strategies where we can develop the knowledge of mathematics. So, in that way, we can focus upon developing these skills as well as developing the knowledge of mathematics also. So, there is a scope for enough definitely, scope definitely. in NAP 20. That you were talking about 21st century skills and that brings to a question of role of AI in the whole innovations in, in you know, coming years. Sir, any thoughts on yeah. In one word, very huge. And uh, we are not too sure what exactly, but we know that. Now, one is individualized instructions is possible. That's for a child, for a teacher, for a teacher trainer, and for the parent also in case, you know, that is possible. Uh, these are the niche areas. Currently, we have a generic set of uh, AI tools like ChatGPT and uh, so on. But in future, you know, we're specifically for education and all that, creating new materials, uh, especially in uh, local languages, all this, you know, we can take the help of uh, AI and see how uh, the, the, that can be generated, and a series of those problem-solving skills, which I already said. So how you teach maths is important, but what you teach in maths is, uh, in my opinion, far more important. So I think some kind of new vision is required. Even for that, you know, we can take help of this. Uh, so very large database, uh, very interesting tools, but what we do with it, I think, yes, depends yeah. on us. Yeah. Correct. Thank you. Uh, no, with that, you have some thoughts on it, yeah. Um, Only one sentence uh, I would like to quote here. Uh, uh, Bruner has said the one uh, thing about his uh, cognitive development. Any content can be taught to any child at any stage of development in some intellectually honest form. So that identifying that intellectually honest form is left to the yes. teachers. So if that teacher could identify that intellectually honest form, then any content can be taught to any child at any stage of development. Yeah, yeah, it's very well said. So you. No, uh, artificial intelligence. I was talking artificial because he spoke about chat uh, GPT, which is yeah. kind of a in thing currently. Yeah. As on date, there is nothing, you know, in education getting experimented, you know, in AR okay. throughout the world. So. So if let them experiment and fail or pause something like that, then it will come to India. Yes. Then we shall think. Sure, <laughs> sure. Thank you. So with that, I uh, you know open for Q and A. Uh, if you have any questions or anything or any observations, you're welcome. Please, yeah. Good morning, and it's an excellent uh, panel which has discussed today. My name is Dr. Renuka. Right, I'm an Ayurvedic doctor but I have a diploma in advanced Montessori methodology. I'm the academic head at Chrysalis IMath India Private Limited. What I have been seeing is, you all have missed a very important group of the growth. You did mention that during development, an intellectually honest way we have to present. But what has happened about that brain growth that occurs from two and a half to six years? That is the preschool which is where we focus and our program is called Intelligent Mathematics IMath, where we start with two and a half. You did say it right, uh, Mr. Raghavinda, that at two. Actually, in the Montessori method, we call it an intellectual uh, awakening of the human mind, mathematical awakening. So around two and a half, this thing becomes active. So you start doing it and you said that the one this is all because of the inherent capability of the human brain of actually you know it is an inbuilt uh, mechanism of the human brain fractions more and less all these are coming genetically memory cannot be held back but namma bharatiya athwa yavade gnana pravaha idralle stoola dinda sukshmat kade hoktivi so you have to start training from the gross to the subtle how can you start with an abstract and then attach a concrete activity because during the period of growth, there are five gateways to learning, 
No innovation can go beyond the five gateways. Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasa, Ganda. You will have to offer it to the five developmental modes and tools. So you start young, you will do a better job. After the development of the growth of the human brain, I'm talking as a doctor also. After age six, 95% of the growth is done. Whatever you are going to do to the child is going to be based on what you have given it earlier. So it is again going to be an exam. I'm going to prepare for the exam. And again, it's going to be Marxist. Yeah. You get the point? How we are Marxist. As a parent, even I have gone through that. But, and my children still today tell, why didn't you do IMATS with me before? Much earlier when I was young. So that aspect, I think, however much you polish, it is going to rub off. So initially, the engrams that are created is going to make mathematics more fear uh, barbardundre. You have to give it to a child in a manner in which it's going to learn. And once you finish learning, uh, the child is going to understand it better. When you know something, you're not going to be afraid. Yeah. Knowledge is something that's going to take away the fear. Not more and more piling and more polishing. Yeah, sure. Underneath, you're going to have the fear. Yeah, that's where you. I come from. Thank you. thank you. Yes, that is true. That's why, you know, there are lots and lots of experiments have been conducted, you know, since uh, 200 years. In fact, Montessori, you know, was one of the such kind of uh, methods. And uh, since uh, 100 years, you know, of Montessori, you know, we have also you know, moved forward. Please also consider that. We are also having a you know, Singapore method of uh, mathematical teaching. We are also having a you know, Finland method of mathematical teaching. We also have in you know, a good old German method of uh, mathematics uh, teaching, etc. But the thing is this. What you said is that the entire NEP also, there is not a single sentence. I have read that. That's why I'm telling you. The emphasis given in the para 32 that preparing you know, the India you know, for the fourth industrial revolution, the emphasis that should have been you know, given you know, for the preschool stages. Because that's where, as a doctor, you, know, I, 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 you are very well said that, that exactly you know, the brain development you know, takes place. OK, what is the solution? Definitely, you know, that you, why don't you give to the child some kind of a toys, which, you know, uh, mathematical type of toys, which she will uh, definitely you know, play with and remember. Because all of us, Definitely you know, remember the toys you know, which we were, you know, played with. Why don't you devise some kind of a toys with mathematical content? You are having science toys, just like that. You know, why don't you have you know, math toys? So math toys, let us say you know, the child is playing you know, with that, with uh, some kind of a toy, math toy. So a toy is a toy. So definitely you know, when she encounters you know, the higher kind of abstract kind of problems, so def definitely you know, she will relate to. That's number one. Number two. That's uh, with this kind of a specific idea, you know, we created in Agassiz that uh, mass park. A park is also one, you know, it, though not it is a toy, you can just, you know, play with. Please visit, you know, that mass park and see how, you know, children as a kind of a group activity, they are just, you know, playing with. But they may not realize that they are dealing with mathematics. But later, you know, definitely they will know that it's, uh, it is mathematics. So similarly, the art, some Adam also was speaking about art. So we have to innovate. We have to give to the child you know, that kind of art-related mathematics or mathematics-related art, both. So the thing is this. The as of now, there is nothing you know, in for that child of that uh, to, to, uh, to engage with mathematics. We have to create that. And Akshara, you know, in that way, you know, could be, could be, because you know, the way you know, I, have, uh, I have seen their work and also the display what they they could take up, you know, this kind of a mathematical uh, toys, you know, kind of a thing, and then uh, just, you know, expand it. Yeah. Thank you. We have a ready curriculum. We are ready for everything. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I have a point, uh, you know, which I have mentioned, but, you know, it's important to again revisit. What we are thinking is foundation uh, numerics and uh, literacy. First, you learn the numbers, then number-related operations, what is roughly called numeracy, otherwise would have been called elementary arithmetic or something, then you go for mathematical processes like problem solving, problem posing and in abstraction and uh, it's not really so. You don't have to do that at the age of five, you know, children or seven. Children learn the basic, you know, numbers, etc. Then you learn mathematical, uh, you know, skills. Not at all. You can work with problem solving and all the related mathematical uh, uh, requirements even when your knowledge of arithmetic is low. I don't know why people don't see this. And now, sometimes it is too late to, to introduce child to the 
uh, core of mathematics. So it's quite important for us to remember that the mathematical processes and learning should happen as early as possible, could be uh, two years, two and a half years also, but in a slightly different way and not as structured as I would say happening. So I think it requires a slightly different approach, but the philosophy is definitely well understood. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I will take another two, three quick questions because we are really running out of time. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, how do we address the misconceptions of uh, math? Uh, for example, when I go for training, the, the very common situation which I address is uh, uh, teachers think that the procedures uh, means doing a uh, very uh, procedures very fast. A, a person who ca do less calculation very fast is considered as a good student. Yeah. Even uh, <laughs> teachers and teacher trainers uh, feel uh, feel that sir, nanno ischanak martani urga antandre itaranta held tarre. But the the topic will be yeah. on maths only. Yeah, got it. Uh, to uh, to address their beliefs about maths is uh, something which is very uh, deep rooted. Uh, not only with the teachers, with parents also. Parents also think that procedural knowledge is something which is very important. So across students, teachers, parents, and everybody, everybody else, and how do we address the misconceptions so that we teach maths uh, properly? That's the... See. Devi is not a mathematician. <laughs> there should be a chapter in the book curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> with all the kind of a prowess, you know, what she had. She died at the age of 85, something like that. Yeah. She could not produce a single mathematics paper. Yeah. Single mathematics paper. So, one, that's one thing. Second is, algorithm way of teaching mathematics is what you know, you are just step by step, 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 step okay? That's so, al many times, algorithm, uh, algorithm means question, of, there are very many algorithms and the question of choice. So, Concept, that's why, you know, the people, you know, are telling, talking about here, conceptual development, you know, in the mathematics is different. Algorithm way of, this is different. Problem solving, you know, you cannot do when you have an algorithm approach, but conceptual mathematics, you know, if you have that education, you can always, you know, solve, you know, problems. So, fundamentally, there are some issues, you know, with this system. See, actually, uh, misconceptions, uh, you should allow for that. Basically, because when you ask a child what is 3 into 4, if the child says 15, the teachers start glaring at the child. The child affrights. See, the child may have many answers to think that 3 into 4 is 15. But why 3 into 4 cannot be 15? You have to find a way. Why 3, 3, 3, 3 added 4 times or 3 multiplied 5 times becomes 12? If you show by concrete examples, then there will not be any misconception. Our system of education is, uh, is, uh, is like this. We never allow the children to make the mistakes. Yeah. But every other uh, skilled persons, you see, they all learn from mistakes, but not we people. We never allow, that's why these misconceptions are there. You please allow that and then correct it, definitely. Uh, there will not be such misconceptions in the future. Yeah, thank you. Sir, yeah. we will take some more. Oh. One or two? Yeah. Yes. Probably one. Yes. One. Yeah, please. Uh, my question is a bit for Mr. Arvind, sir. The thing is, uh, am I audible? Switch on. Shall I hear? You know, have worked in the capacity of a translator or uh, headed the company of translators to, uh, for NCRT in Canada. What happens is we, uh, we all uh, know about this argument that uh, uh, the Sanskritization of uh, teaching the language uh, where uh, we uh, teach Vavakalana, Sankalana, which scares away the child. Uh, I, I'm not sure about that. But the thing is, uh, uh, sorry, I might be a little bit um, incoherent here. Uh, is this a really a problem? Because uh, we, the adults who uh, really translate for the kids, uh, and uh, from now on, the artificial intelligence or NLP, natural language processing mechanisms, will be translating the la uh, knowledge and language uh, of mathematics again. See, is there a deadlock? I mean, uh, is there a need to simplify the language? Uh, is, uh, is it really an obstacle for the kid to take up? Because we all know that kids can learn any number of language when they are uh, growing up. But uh, if language itself is a problem, uh, they could have really understood that Sankalana, Vivakalana thing and uh, could have solved the issue, uh, right? Uh, my question is like, is there a necessity to simplify the language of math? See, actually we are introducing multilingualism. 
even if you are studying in Kannada medium or English medium or whatever it is, if the child can express what it is supposed to express, it is allowed to express in its own language. See, that is made clear. See, if the child cannot understand what is sankalana, let the child say something kududu. Or it may say addition. Or if in some of its colloquial language, if it were to say something else, and it means that it is addition, it is accepted. So uh, now the textbooks, energizes textbooks which we are bringing about, so these textbooks will focus on this multilingualism also. I have one, one thing you know, to add. This problem exists in all languages, including English. Okay? The industrialization, you know, uh, when, when it started, when education became you know, universal, this, since those days, you know, this kind of a problem you know, is there. But we have to tackle it. But in Canada, the problems are different. Because up to 1935, the people you know, who gave you know, that Paribhashika Shabdas equivalent words were all in you know, Kannada Pandits. Jala Janaka. But what kind of a thing in you know, the Jala Janaka? <laughs> so to produce water in you know, something else also is needed, not only oxygen. So they did not. Ingol, the dioxide, oh. all these kind of a things. Okay, or in mathematics, Utkrama, who can on the earth you know, can understand? They have to go to the Sanskrit dictionary and see it. Okay? So these problems you know, exist. Yeah. Thank you. I, have, yeah, I, I can I take only last one question. Yeah. Can, I, can I ask? <coughs> when we were young, we had a system of asking by lekkas, so many uh, ah, mental calculations math. of mental maths. But nowadays it has totally gone out. Suppose a textbook has not come in the time, the teachers do not know what to do in the, in the classes. This is one problem which is the present. I think whole generation is, has missed it. We are running a school and I am finding very difficult to find teachers to have this exercise in the class. And another thing what Mr. Raghavendra has pointed out, Many children do not know they are good in maths. For example, I can tell you one example uh, that one boy who was very dull in the class, in the mathematics, but he was a very good as a salesman in the Pataki Angadi during the Diwali. <laughs> he was giving prop correctly the, uh, referred, I mean, the balance money. So I told him, you are so good in the Angadi, why not you are not good in the class? Then onwards, he, is, he has become improved in the mathematics. So I think we have to find out a talent in the student Apart from the talent in the teachers, yes. this is my yes. point. Thing called the advertisement mathematics. Yeah. Please, you know, go take some kind of a courses for your teachers. Entertainment mathematics. You know, which ones? Entertainment. <laughs> give the entertainment mathematics. Yeah, sure. Yeah. There is a separate entertainment. Yeah, so large subject. I mean, entertainment mathematics. Yeah, correct. Enter entertainment. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Entertainment mathematics. Yeah. So only the thing that we require is we are not connecting mathematics to daily life. Yeah. Suppose you bring a masonry worker and ask how many tiles are required for this room. Even without the knowledge of mensuration, you will calculate and tell. A student who has studied mensuration for three or four years, if you ask, you will not be able to do that. See, if we bridge this gap, definitely there will not be such yeah, things. Correct. Thank Application you. is equally important. Uh, with that, I end this session. Uh, thanks a lot for all my panelists.